The Foundation for India and Indian Diaspora Studies recently orchestrated a significant event in Silicon Valley, hosting distinguished guests and advocacy leaders for a celebration of Indian American advocacy. Notable figures, including Council General of India, Dr. Srikar Reddy, Israeli's Deputy Council General, Matan Zameer, and Silicon Valley entrepreneur Raju Reddy graced the event with insightful addresses. Dr. Srikar Reddy emphasized the robust partnership between India and the United States, shedding light on ongoing Indo-US initiatives. He underscored the crucial role of the Indian diaspora in fortifying this bilateral relationship. So, in fact, uh, the name of the organization itself is for India and also for Indian diaspora. So, it speaks about the whatever activities it is doing. I was able to glance through some of the events that were organized by uh, Kandya Rauji and also the members of this organization. I think you are doing a wonderful job in uh, creating linkages between India and US by coming up with studies, reports, recommendations and also creating awareness among diaspora regarding various rights and also uh, for example, uh, you are also taken up regarding the green card and other issues also with the uh, federal government. We are doing a lot of things for the community. I think as the Indian community is growing now, I think uh, it is close to 5 million. 5 million, we have, we have large Indian diaspora in US, especially in the, in the state of California itself, we have more than 1 million uh, members of the Indian diaspora. Yeah. So, as you know, in recent years, we have seen a transformational change in the India-US partnership. Especially after Bodhiji government in the last nine, nine and a half years, but most recently because of the bipartisan support in the US also and with the recent visit of the Honorable Prime Minister to US in June this year. So that I can say the highest point in the relationship between the both countries. And this was followed up by the successful visit of President Biden to uh, New Delhi in September to participate in the G20 meeting. So this shows the trust and understanding at the highest level, at the leaders level between Prime Minister Bodhiji and the President Biden. And also at various levels, you can see the defense, the defense ministry level, the external affairs ministry level, and also at the commerce ministry. Like, I think great potential is there. Now I think, uh, the, I can say, sky is the limit for the uh, cooperation between India and US. I look forward to working with, especially think tanks like FITS and also uh, all of you present here to enhance this cooperation between India and the west coast of the US, especially California and Bay Area. Israeli's Deputy Council General Matan Zamir expressed gratitude for India's unwavering support and addressed efforts against Hamas, affirming Israel's commitment to countering terrorism. Because as you all know, on October 7th, Israel experienced the most difficult, terrible day that we had since the Holocaust. Hamas terrorists came from Gaza, killed 1,400 people of, of our people, babies, children, women. I will not get into the details of what happened there. You've all been following the news. I had, unfortunately, because of my work, to watch a lot of these videos and a lot of these images. Barbaric, violent. You cannot even imagine what these people in the area around Gaza had to go through on that dark, terrible holiday, Saturday morning on October 7th. But what's important for me to say today, that even though Israel has received an, a surprising, unimaginable blow, just like the Chabad House in Mumbai, we will win this, and we will get bigger and stronger than we were before. Thank you. Now, I want to say something um, to you all tonight. Other than thank you for inviting me, I have to share with you that the community that has been standing strongest with us, with Israel, has been the Hindu community. It's the Indian government. Thank you.
Thank you very much. It is the Indian government, it is the Indian people, and it is the Hindu communities around the world. So it is my honor to be with you today and say thank you. Every I am on social media because we're fighting a lot of hate on social media. And every time I see a, a hateful post, I see um, the people who are attacking those hateful posts have the Indian flag and have the Israeli flag. And that's not a coincidence. And when there are posts of support saying we stand with Israel, I'll, most of the times there's also an Indian flag there. And it warms my heart. It makes me feel proud. And I want to thank you for that too. And even though we don't take it for granted, in my mind, it makes sense. There's so many commonalities between India and Israel. We both share the, the, um, uh, the value of democracy more than anything else. We value family. We value education. We value, yes, family, yes, your mother there. We value the things that matter. FIIDS founding director Khandir Khand provided insights into the historic advocacy campaign on Capitol Hill covering key policy matters. The event also saw updates on various programs including high school and congressional internship programs, fact-based policy research and the Indo-American voters awareness campaign. This time in Capitol Hill Indian American Advocacy Summit was hosted. There are many other summits happen or programs happen, like a Diwali programs happen, many other events happen. However, advocacy means actual engaging the people, elected officials, discussing with them on the issues as a group, as a citizen, expressing the concerns, asking their inputs and then discussing that. That is what it takes <coughs> to influence the policies. So that is something that we did this year. More than 100 people all over the USA went <laughs> engaged outreach almost all is 400 plus elected officials. We then meaningfully interacted or communicated with 180 and then having the discussions during the day and the evening about 100. So this was unparalleled from our point of view. The first time as uh, some elected official said that Indian American voice was heard. We raised three issues. The first one was US-India relations. In US-India relations, there are two aspects of it. Is one is the most important uh, we raised was that initiative for critical and emerging technologies. I said, how many of you heard about this one? One, two, three. Stanford professor, of course. <laughs> You're busy. Just those who are participating. So this was actually the you know that on, in the month of June, Prime Minister Modi ji had come on a state visit. Correct? One of the most agenda of that state visit was the ICET. And the second was uh, the Indo-Pacific. And when I asked that question about the ICET, and you, you didn't know, similar experience we had experienced in the Capitol Hill. Even in the elected officials, most of them were not aware about this one. So ICET actually is a you know, treaty or the program was launched last year between the two national security uh, advisors of those two countries and then Prime Minister and uh, President Biden, their offices and if you go to the website, White House, White House website, it actually lays down the, it's a multi-dimensional foundation for a very strategic long-term relationship between the India, US and India on various aspects. It covers military, defense, space, science and technology, hyper-competing, artificial intelligence, academics education, so it is a government to government relationship, people to people relationship, academic relationship and industry relationship. 
So because US India relations are very important and that's why but however you notice that even though the ISET was announced last year even on Capitol Hill and it is hardly White House to Capitol Hill it's not even for, uh, for, uh, for two miles right? you can walk in a 15 minutes but that message was not reached that's where advocacy comes into the picture we took that message there first before even Modi's visit was there so that's second thing what we are doing is that uh, uh, Indo-Pacific is a very important region because world's largest trade goes through that uh, corridor. However, as you may have seen that last uh, few years, particularly in the COVID time, we have seen that global supply chain was disrupted. And because only one country has a dominance into that, at the same time, that country also has a much more wider uh, restriction and hegemonic uh, uh, actions going on. That is a China in the South China Sea and that corridor. So that's why it's very important from the global perspective for the peace and stability, prosperity perspective to have a security in and the uh, proper stabilization of the supply chain from the region. And that's why US and India are working towards that. You may have heard that part, uh, right? The Quad is an initiative, US, uh, India, Japan, Australia, so that's going on. However, we actually took the different message. What we said is that if that region has to be stable, it cannot be just four countries. Out of this, one country which is the largest player, USA, is a far off. Australia is also that way far off. It has to be the regional players. We actually worked on two more issues. One was immigration, and immigration is one of the most favorite, and we have a particularly uh, long battle going on on that. Now, why policies are important, right? Because when we are prospering, many times we feel that hey, we have life is going on very well, we are very educated, we are having jobs, we are successful, there is no problem. But at macro level, all the policy happen, they impact all of us, we don't even care, because we don't even understand. So that is where the policy engagement is very important. Silicon Valley entrepreneur Raju Reddy highlighted the pivotal role of Indian American startups in influencing policy changes and fostering prosperity through US-India collaborations. The celebration marked a milestone in journalism as FIIDS announced the first ever award for excellence in journalism, honoring Press Trust of India reporter Mr. Lalit Jha for his fair and insightful coverage of US-India relations and Indian diaspora-related matters. The event served as a platform for a comprehensive discussion on the future of the Indian diaspora and its role in fostering global partnerships. The shared commitment of distinguished guests, advocacy leaders, and community representatives from diverse backgrounds underscored the vital role organizations like FIIDS play in shaping narratives and representing the interests of the Indian-American community.